give me a few more seconds. All right. So I, I posted the. No, I have not posted it, but I do have a solution uh, for exam three. And I would just, and if you can, let me just share my screen with you guys. Okay. <clears throat> And I will just post that on right after class. Right. So, uh, what do you guys think of the exam? Is that okay or the, is it a bit too, too long? I thought, at least for me, I thought you give us, there's a lot more time, like there's 125 minutes. So thank you for giving us that extra time. Yeah, okay. All right, so we're going to talk about that more about that um, maybe next week when we review on this. And today, what we want to do is just move on. We still want to um, talk about uh, Taylor series, stuff like that. So let's review what we did before the exam. And I think that's a while ago, last Wednesday. Okay, so. Um, I still need to set up my pen. Hold on. Everything's not working today, so then do that again. <clears throat> Here's my one note. Okay. Um, sharing that. So what I had last, we had last time on Wednesday is. Uh, So we we're trying to do given a function, well, maybe a differentiable function f of x. And how can we express it as a power series? So that, that, that was the key question. So this is in 11.9, okay. And the way we had the example that we did is we're going to, the first way to do that, we're going to use this well-known fact. And if you have one over one minus T, and this one can be written as one plus T plus T square plus T to the nth power. And this is tr um, just the power series T to the nth power and goes from zero to infinity. This is true. This is true for all t such that absolute value of t is less than one. So, and we just do substitutions to do all this kind of things, right? Just to get you guys remind, uh, to remind you of you guys how will we do that. Let me do another example showing how we're going to do this. Okay. Uh, the example I'm, I want to do is uh, um, you're given f of x equal to 1 over x squared minus 3x plus 2. And how can we express that? Um, as a power series. 
All we want to do is using this fact, right? But when I'm trying to use this, I find there was trouble and up here, you know, the degree of this denominator goes to two, okay? So we cannot directly use this. However, if you take a close look of this uh, given function, we observe this one, the, this denominator can be expressed, can be factored as x minus one times x minus two. And with this form, that reminds me um, of, uh, we can use partial fractions. So this is the same as one over x minus two minus um, one over x minus one. So it's not hard to rewrite this um, fraction into the sum of this two. Okay. Now with this two uh, fractions, then probably we can use that uh, identity right here, one over one, one minus t as this power series. But we still need to do a, a little, um, do a little bit more work. First, let's do this one over x minus two. Well, the thing is, I cannot directly use one over x minus two with this one because in order to use this equation, you see the leading curve, and you know, the leading term here, the constant term should be one. But here I have two, right? I have negative two. So you need to do some pre-processing. So if you want to fact out the minus two. If you fact out the minus two, this x minus two can be written as just uh, one minus half of x. So, and you can write this one as minus a half times one over one minus half of x. So this is kind of like a tricky pre-processing. The purpose is you want to match with this identity, one over one minus something, okay? Now with this, you can think of, I can use my t as half of x, you do substitution, okay? What about this constant? Well, we do not do anything with that constant. So leave that minus a half there. And if you think about your t is just equal to half of x. So what's in that uh, bracket, basically that kids can be written as one over one minus t. And we know this one, it will be just sigma t to n power n goes from zero to infinity. This will be true while t, in this case, t is equal to half of x is strictly less than one. And we can also multiply both x by two. So this will be true when absolute value of x is no more than two, this will be true. And the final step, I can just substitute half of x for t. And we just have a power series. If you want to multiply this minus half inside here, that's fine. So you should have like x to the nth power over two to n. So I just follow this out. So I'm done with the first term, right? Okay. This one over x minus two can be written as this power series, if and only if absolute value of x is no more than two. So we have to treat the second term, one over x minus one. Again, you know, the leading constant is not positive one. We had the experience, so we can pull out the negative sign. So that becomes one minus uh, x. So that's just minus one times one over one minus x. And this one, we can get that really quick. This is just the power series. You, you can just take your t to be x. So that's just x to the nth power. And this will be true when absolute value of t, which in this case is equal to absolute value of x is less than one. Right, so we have this two. So now combining these two together, therefore my original f of x, which is equal to one over x squared minus three x plus two, which is equal to one over x minus two minus one over x minus one. So I can just plug in the power series. What I have is minus a half 
times one over two to the nth power x to the nth power. And here is a minus, there's another negative sign, so that's a plus. Sigma n goes from zero, uh, zero to infinity, x to the nth power. And because they have the common power, you know, x to the nth power, and if you want, put them together, that's fine. So you can just put x to the nth power here, and what you have is just minus a half. Well, minus half times this one is just minus one over two to the n plus one's power, then plus one. So Isn't this that a, wouldn't it be the first series minus the second series? Because it's one over x minus two minus one over x minus one? Yeah, but here you have a minus, and this one over x minus one, there's a negative sign there. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so we got this. Okay. So now there's one little thing left. When will this identity hold? So it is. it will hold if both conditions will be satisfied. X, absolute value of X is less than two, and absolute value of X is less than one. So basically, intersection of these two sets, right? For the first one, you want to make sure X, absolute value of X is no more than two. For the second one, you want to have um, absolute value of X is no more than one. So you want to you want both to happen, then you want to take the intersection of these two. Well, the intersection of these two intervals, it will be the smaller one. So when absolute value of x is strictly less than one. So it will guarantee both identity, uh, both inequality hold. Okay. So this is just like a tricky kind of, you know, I really don't, do not really like this one. This is a more artificial problem. The purpose of what this is try to show off the techniques of how to using how to use this uh, geometric series kind of way to express a given function into power series. You see, you use uh, some of the partial fractions, and also the whole idea is you play, you manipulate, you play around. Just to want to make sure. The leading constant is one, you, you can do substitution with that t. All right, so that reviews what we learned last Wednesday. Well, this work for any other functions? Obviously not. So, and here's another example. We, we do need something else. Okay. So now this, let's take a, not, uh, take a look of another example. What if this time I change that a little bit? F of x is equal to one over one minus x then squared. Now this time, all the previous techniques, whatever, doesn't work. You know, you know this is pretty simple. You cannot really write that as a sum of the partial fractions. But there's a new trick, which will, that's what we want to learn. Uh, this time, this is something is called a term by term differentiation. This is a very special for the power series. Okay, differentiation. Okay, uh, what does that mean? Well, I just you know, once again, we're still trying to use this identity here. 1 over 1 minus t. And let's just look, find the connections between this function and 1 over 1 minus x. It turns out we observed if you take the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x, well, if you take the derivative, so this is 1 minus x to the negative 1's power, you take the derivative. By the chain rule, you have minus 1 bring that down and you have one minus X and minus two. And by the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of the inside function, one minus X, that's another negative one. So you eventually have positive one. You get to one over one minus X squared, right? So you take the derivative of one over one minus X, you do the derivative, you get to this function. So in order to get the power series for this function here, okay, the power series. So one of the naive way we can think of is 
how about you know I started with this one over one minus x, which I know this is just equal to one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth and the plus x to the nth power and the blah 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 right and what if I started with this, then I just do the differentiation on both sides. If I do the differentiation on both sides, the left hand side, based on what we just observed, that will just give me my f of x, one over one minus x squared. Okay. Now, how about, how am I going to do the derivative of, of this infinite terms? Well, one way you can kind of cheat is what if I just take the differentiation of each term, then add them up. So what do I mean is I take the derivative of one, then I take the derivative of the second term x, and then I take the derivative of x squared, take the derivative of x cubed, and take the derivative of x to the nth power, then I add them together. Do you think we can do that? That's probably one way we want to try, right? Okay. We have like some rule. So if we can do that, then the derivative of one gets zero, the derivative of x you get one, the derivative of x squared you get two x, the derivative of x cubed you get three x squared, and so on and so forth. And the derivative of x to the nth power gives you times x to the n minus one's power. And this one is just like a power series. So we can write that as sigma, and you see the pattern is x n times x to the n minus one's power, and your n starts from actually from one to infinity, right? Um, when will this be true, right? You know, uh, when will this one converge? And we can use a, a root test. So let's take the root test. Or maybe we can do the ra ratio test, right? So we do the ratio test. A sub n is equal to n to the a n times x to the n minus one's power. So your a sub n plus one is n plus one times x to the n's power. And you do the ratio. That gives the n plus one over n absolute value of x. And as n goes to infinity, this one just goes to absolute value of x. It turns out if this one is absolute is less than one, it will converge. Well, you see this radius of convergence or the interval of convergence is the same as this original power series. This geometric series also will converge if and only if absolute value of x is less than one. So you don't change the interval of convergence, but you do have a new power series. We can get the power series of this f of x. And this is just uh, something called the term by term differentiation. You do the differentiation of each term, term by term, then you add them up, okay? So this is the new trick we learned. But if you really, uh, think about this for a moment, you can uh, raise a big question here. So, you know, for finite many terms, say for one example, if you just have like two terms, you add these two together, then you do the derivative. Of course, it will be the same as you take the derivative of each term, then you add them together, right? Even for finite man, many of that, that is true. However, if you go to infinity and beyond, can you still do that? That's a big question. And if you really think about this, this one actually, in, you implicitly switch the order of your operation. What does that mean? That means, well, if you look at this one right there is, you want to do the summation first, right? You want to do the summation first. You want to sum up this one first, then you do the derivative. Now you look at, what you have here with this kind of things, it's kind of like you're doing the derivative of each term, then you sum them up. You see the difference between these two? 
uh, if you do not use derivative, then uh, you know if you would only use prime, it maybe is much more clear. So instead of you you using the prime, then we just do uh, d dx. So this is d dx. You see, you do summation sigma first, then you do differentiation. Now, when you go to this green thing here, well, this guy, the prime, if I change that, that becomes, you do the differentiation first, then you do the summation. You see the position of sigma and the differentiation, you switch the positions. That's what it meant by you implicitly, you switch the order of operation. When everything is finite, when you have finite many terms, is perfect fine. But when things goes to infinity, that's a big question: Can you do that or not? So theoretically, you have you have to show that you just formally we perform this kind of calculation and it works out. Uh, turns out in other advanced courses, people prove that. So yes, we can do that. This okay. So this one is okay. We prove that. Only for power series, we can do that. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Yes. Uh, so that, but I want to present that. This is the big question actually, which is the hidden there. Okay. Uh, uh, does that make sense? So in, in summary, so we have another example. If you want to do the partial uh, power series of this function and uh, another trick we can do is we can do just term by term differentiation. We start with one over one minus X, get this power series first, then just do the differentiation of each term. Then I will sum up, we get the uh, power series for these new functions. So we can, you know, use this one to solve, um, to find the power series for a lot of functions right there. So if we can't like originally manipulate the thing to look like um, the one minus T, then it'd be a good idea to maybe try looking at the derivative. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So, you know, uh, the one I showed like previously, those kind of, those just elementary tricks, you can just split them doing all these things. But when you go to like this function, one over one minus X then squared, all those elementary tricks, you know, won't work, but you have to go to this trick, So this term by term differentiation works. So that's, it's all only special for power series. And that's not also covered the case like this one. So let's, let's do another thing here. So this one just got, um, How we have f of x equal to inverse tangent x, or just arc tangent x. I'll find the power series. Rep representation for f of x. Now this time, uh, you know, the term by term differentiation won't work, but there's another thing we're, we're going to learn is called term by term integration. Why? Because now this time, uh, if you look at this, uh, if you do the antiderivative, you know, if you, we think about inverse tangent x, then this thing will pop up, you know, one over one plus x squared dx. We know that will give us inverse tangent of x plus constant c, right? So now in order to get the power series representation for inverse tangent x, so one way we can do is, can we get the power series of one over one plus x squared? Then we just do the integration, get the antiderivative, that will give me the right hand side, okay? So let's just uh, go through this plan. Okay, so first, one over one plus x squared. That one is easy because this one is just like one over one minus minus x squared. So this one you can think of, this is just like 
one over one minus t, and by taking your t is equal to minus x squared. So this thing, we know how to do this uh, because this one is just equal to sigma and goes from zero to infinity t squared, uh, t to the nth power, right? Because your t is equal to negative x squared, so you plug that in. So negative x squared for t. So that's basically, uh, don't forget, this is a negative one to the nth power. So you end up with uh, minus one to the nth power x to the two n. Well, it makes sense if you write this out, it's just like you start with one minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the sixth plus x to the eighth, so on and so forth. It looks like this is a geometric series with ratio r is equal to minus x squared. So when the absolute value of x negative x squared, which is basically absolute value of x squared is less than one, which is basically x absolute value of x is less than one, this power series will, will converge, right? So this is true for absolute value of x strictly less than one. So we have this thing here. Now next, I'm going to use this identity. So I'm going to do the antiderivative of the left-hand side. And that will just give me inverse tangent of x plus c. The right-hand side, so it's kind of like 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the sixth plus x to the eighth, blah, 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 plus minus 1 to the nth power x to the 2 nth power infinite many terms. I'm going to do the, do the integration. So how am I going to do the integration? A lateral way, but it's just like a cheating. You see here, you want, actually this one means you want to do the integration of the sigma, the position of these two operations. You do summation first, then you do the integration, right? Uh, this is what that meant. But we can try to cheat we can say, okay, can we do the integration of one? Then plus the integration of the second term. So I do the integration of each term, then I add them up. Typically, you cannot do that. Because what you're doing is actually, if you think about this kind of operation, basically that means you do the integration of each term. So this will be two n. Then after that, you sum them up. You see the order of those two operations, sigma first, then integration. Now, when you go down here, you do integration first, then you do sigma. So this kind of switching of operation order is called a term by term. Now this time is integration. Can we do that? Typically we can't, but for power series, we can do that. It's okay for power series. So we can go through this, right? Now when you go through this one, what we had integration of uh, any derivative of one, that gives me x, and the derivative of negative x squared gives me minus uh, one over three x cubed, then plus one over five x to the fifth, then minus one seventh x to the seventh, and keep going. In general, like this one here, you have minus one to the nth power, you have over two n plus one times x to the two n plus one. And this one can be written as sigma. N goes from zero to infinity, minus one to the n's power, all over two n plus one, x to the two n plus one's power. And that will be your right hand side. But be careful here. You cannot just erase that C, you have to carry that C, okay? And this is true. And using the power series or using the ratio test or root test and also, and we can find out this is true for all absolute value of x is less than one. This will be true for all x satisfying this condition. 
we almost solve this problem, but there's one question left. People will ask, what the heck is this that constant C? This constant C is a fixed constant. That one constant works for all X. Can we figure out what C is? Well, yes. The question is, what is C? Well, we can plug in for special number of X to figure out what that C is, okay? So, um, because this is true for all X with absolute value of X is less than one. So can I plug in X equal to 0 0.3? Well, if you plug in 0 0.3 into that equation, that will be true. Inverse tangent of 0 0.3 plus C should be equal to this power series when you plug in 0 0.3 for X. But that doesn't help me, does not help to find C. What causes is the problem? Although this is true, but this number 0 0.3 is not convenient for us to evaluate that, okay? So you probably want to pl plug in a very nice number and that number turns out is zero. Zero is indeed in that interval there. So when x is equal to zero, this thing in the box, this identity should work too. So you should have inverse tangent of zero plus C should be equal to the right hand side. But when you plug in zero for the right hand side, automatically get zero. And inverse tangent of zero is also zero. So that forces your C has to be equal to zero. C has to be equal to zero. So finally, we can conclude inverse tangent of x because your c has to be equal to zero that is equal to this power series minus one to the nth power of two n plus one x to the two n plus one so this is how we get the power series representation of inverse tangent x but in this case what we learn is term by term integration Um, so we can have like a theorem like this. Summarize this. Should I just go? Yeah. We cannot prove that, but this will be true. This is very important. This is very special for power series. This is the foundation for this Taylor series of all this kind of things. So if we know a power series uh, we know the general form is c sub n times x minus a to the nth power and n goes say from zero to infinity doesn't matter start from zero or one okay has a radius of convergence This is R greater than zero. Um, then uh, we have the sum f of x equals sigma n goes from zero to infinity uh, c sub n times x minus a to the nth power. This sum, I don't know what that f of x is if we write this out. It says is differentiable and continuous on that open interval. You know, center at a, so the radius is r is a minus r to a plus r, and we have the following term by term differentiation. You do the derivative of f of x. So basically you're doing the differentiation of this power series. You see the way I wrote that? You're doing the sigma first, then you do the differentiation and then you can switch the order. Mm -hmm. 
you can do the derivative first, then you do the summation. So when you do the derivative, okay, make sure the index start from one right now, because when n is equal to zero, you have a constant. When you do the derivative, the constant gives you zero. So actually start with one. So it's kind of like you just do the derivative of, of each one. So this actually you start with n goes from one to infinity. So you do the derivative of this one, you have n times x minus a to the n minus one's power. And so it will convert the same radius of convergence. Okay, so this is true. This is called that term by term differentiation. Okay. Um, and you can also do the antiderivative of f of x. Don't forget, a lot of time you get a plus c. This is like you do summation first. And then you do the antiderivative. This one is equal to, you can do the antiderivative first. Then you do the summation. And if you do the antiderivative of this one, typically you will get Cn over n plus one. You basically just do the antiderivative of x minus a to the nth power. And you just get the new power series. Okay. So this is very important. This is called term by term differentiation, term by term integration. Okay. And this is same radius of convergence, same radius of convergence. Right. So that's what we want to learn. This is all the important stuff from section 11.1. Okay. Uh, another application of that, what we can try is typically we want to say, for example, you have f of x equal to lecture log of absolute value of one plus x, how can we get a power series of f? Uh, we just think of log of one over one plus x. If you do the antiderivative of one over one plus x dx, that gives you um, lecture log of one plus one, absolute value of one plus x plus a constant c, right? Okay. So now, uh, one over one plus x, and this is just like one over one minus minus x. So you can just use your t to be equal to minus x, and you can get in the, um, the power series of that. That should be equal to one minus x plus x squared. And you can always think of this is just a geometric series with ratio minus x, minus x cubed plus x to the fourth minus x to the fifth, so on and so forth. And this is just minus one to the nth power, x to the nth power. So you get the power series. This is true when the absolute value of negative x, you, your rate ratio, well, is the same as absolute value of x is less than one. This is true. Okay. Now, because of the previous theorem, so you can do the term by term integration. So you do the antiderivative of one over one plus x, that gives you absolute uh, lecture log of x, absolute value of one plus x plus constant c, that should be equal to, you do the antiderivative of your right hand side. But how can we do this dot, dot, dot? Well, we cheat, we do term by term differentiation. So you do the integration of one, you get x, you do the integration of this second term, you have minus x squared divided by two. The third one gives you x cubed divided by three, right? So minus x to the third, you do the the antiderivative, you get x to the fourth over four, and so on and so forth. You have minus one to the nth power, now divided by n plus one, then times x to n plus one. So you just get a power series. And this is true with the same radius of convergence for all absolute value of x strictly less than one. So, so we have this. Again, what will be that constant C? 
because this constant C works for all the X, so we want to pick a very special uh, number uh, to figure that out. Uh, uh, in this case, typically the zero is a good choice. When X is equal to zero, your left hand side becomes the ledger log of one plus zero plus C. The whole right hand side, because that's all equal to zero. But the log one is equal to zero, that tells you C must be equal to zero. So when C is equal to zero, eventually, finally we got ledger log of absolute value of uh, one plus X is equal to x minus x squared divided by 2 plus x cubed minus 3 uh, minus x to the fourth over 4 and plus uh, that's the general term and if you want to write this out this is a x n goes from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the nth power x to the n plus 1's power over n plus 1 Okay, this is true when absolute value of x is strictly less than uh, less than one. And it turns out actually we can show when x is equal to one, this uh, this one oh, this equation also holds. So that will give us another uh, another uh, the identity what we have. And we can show, you know, this is an oscillating series, right? When x is equal to one, you plug that. So it will converge and the, both sides will be equal. So when x is equal to one, we can get ledger log of two because when you plug in one for x equal to the right hand side because of one minus a half plus a third minus a quarter plus a one fifth minus one sixth. If you remember, I asked you this question before what is the sum of that minus one to the n's power when x is equal to one so that's one over n plus one and people figure out log two why that is equal to log two so this comes from the power series so in 18th century one of the four greatest mathematicians you may have heard of this guy euler he discovered all these things. So if you Google that, there's tons of this uh, very interesting um, identities about a power series. And Euler and the Gauss and the people in during that time, they play with this power series of, a lot. Even without any theory to prove that, they just do a lot of formal calculations. They derive a lot of like amazing identities. And even like, goes like for the previous one, what we did here. It turns out this identity is also uh, true, okay? Although it says the radius of convergence is one and, and because once again, and you can show this is actually true, this one actually holds when X is equal to one also holds. So when x is equal to one, this guy holds, you know, this is x is less than one. x equal to one is also holds. And if you plug that in, like a one for x, you have inverse tangent of one, which is equal to pi over four. And that e equal to the right-hand side, when you plug in uh, one for x. So just this one, if you write this out, this is basically um, one minus a, a third, plus um, one fifth minus one seventh plus one ninth. So uh, minus one over 11, so on and so forth. This is actually another way in the past, people try to approximate pi. What they did is they try to calculate um, a lot of terms of this um, oscillating series, then multiply by four, because this will give you the uh, approximation of pi. So that's uh, 11.9. Okay. So we'll have a few more minutes. I just want to give you a brief introduction for uh, 11.10. So finally, we want to get to this uh, thing called the Taylor series. Okay.
Although in 11.9, we learned a lot of like techniques like uh, geometric series, term by term differentiation, term by term integration. But same question, if people ask you, how can I do the um, power series for this function f of x equal to e to the x, f of x equal to sine x, f of x equal to cosine x, or maybe f of x equal to tangent x, right? All those kind of um, functions, or maybe we can do f of x equal to uh, the square root of um, one plus x. All those kind of functions. How do we find the power series representation c and x times x minus a to the nth power? Now, even with term by term differentiation, you cannot solve that. The reason is your e to the x cannot be expressed as the derivative or the antiderivative of like a geometric series. So in the previous examples, all those examples, cool examples, we did log, ledger log and the inverse tangent, it happens, you know, that those two functions, they're related to this kind of the result of a geometric series sum, right? Okay. But even for this one, you cannot do that. So we need a general formula uh, to figure out the power series. You know, in order to figure out the power series, the key is you provide me with the coefficients. Okay. You need to provide the formulas or the values. for the coefficients, coefficients c sub n. Once you tell me what c sub n is, I know that a power series is, okay? It turns out this guy, this British mathematician, Taylor, okay? He found a formula for figure out what that c sub n is. So there's a, a uniform way to figure out the power series. So the power series will be named after him, it's a Taylor series. Okay. So that just fit this out. So what will be the formula? So people will think about, so if, uh, suppose F is given, is a given very nice function, smooth or differentiable functions, nice function. And when I say nice means it can be differentiable for many orders. Um, many orders, that means you can take the first, second, or third as high, as many order derivatives as you can, right? So it's a nice function. And also there's another quantity A, which is the center, A is given. So the number x equal to a is given. So you, you are given the center and you are given a function of f of x. So you try to find the power series. n goes from zero to c sub n times x minus a. So, so you have this equation, okay? And, and if you write this out, basically you want to figure out c zero plus c one x minus a to the first power plus C2 X minus A squared, plus C3 X minus A cubed. And you keep going, Cn X minus A to the nth power, and so on and so forth, okay? We just need to figure out what C1, C2, C0 is, okay? The first thing is we should know what C0 is, okay? And we know the power, if this is true, okay? So this will be true for some values of x. Of course, this will be true, you know, there's a certain radius of convergence, but at least it will be true when x is equal to a, right? So when you plug in a for x, okay, when you plug in a for x to the left-hand side, when well, you will end up with f of a. When you plug in a for the right-hand side, and the c0 is the constant, right? But the rest of the terms, when you plug in a for x, you get zero. So that automatically gives you c zero cannot be anything else. 
it has to be the value of f at a. Right. So that tells you a C1, a C0. It turns out I'm going to explain that why in the um, tomorrow, C sub n actually is equal to the nth order derivative of f evaluated at a divided by n factorial. So once we have this formula, we have the power series, we have the Taylor series. That's it. That is what we will be going to talk about uh, next time. All right. That's all for today. Any questions? Are you going to post the uh, exam three solutions? Yeah, I can do that. I can do that right after the, in a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a good one.